Hello, my name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Puppet Master, the original movie. Uh, this is from 1990, directed by David Smaller and produced by Charles Band. This is, of course, a full moon movie. It's kind of the one that really uh, launched the studio. Uh, this would go direct to video. It had a theatrical option, but they had a business model in mind where they realized they could actually make more money going direct to video. Um, this was in the air of the VHS uh, video rental stores, you know, like Blockbuster, but also lots of uh, mom-and-pop ones, too, that uh, uh, really did support a lot of these uh, more, in more independent-style movies. Uh, Full Moon was by no means a big studio. Um, back then, they just started, and it helped launch their business, and you'd essentially get a bunch of these on VHS tape with eye-catching covers and cool names, and they were trying to make your impression there in the store, and Full Moon was able to support itself and make money just through video rental uh, stores, and that's where they kind of got their cult following. You talk about people when they were younger, and they would, you know, rent, you know, all these movies <laughs> one after another, and they'd start to, you know, to love these movies that never had a theatrical run, but they were... Uh, essentially video rental store originals. I mean, you could buy the VHS, but those are the air of video rentals. Um, and this one, yeah, this launched the studio, um, because this was the cool puppet movie. Um, the story, it opens with this flashback. You have, a uh, Toulon, I think, um, the original puppet master. Uh, so he is in his room, working on a one last puppet, and another one of his puppets goes, oh no, there, there are two guys coming, two assassins, and he's you know, really calm, he's like, oh I know, and he hides all of his puppets in the big, uh, the big box that's on the front cover, his big puppet case. He puts them all hidden in a wall, and then he kills himself right before the two assassins get to him. You know, avoid torture so you don't give anything away. Um, so the evil doesn't get the puppets, and the puppets rest in the wall until I think it's as present day as the the slide, which would be 1990. Um, so uh, all around the world, there's a group of like um, four psychics. They all have a unique ability, and they're all in their own little places. But they get this call to come visit this hotel. And their call is from their associate, I, I don't want to call him friend, their uh, associate, uh, Gallagher. And Gallagher wants them all to come to this hotel, so they all stop what they're doing, and they go, uh, you also get, uh, a cameo when they're doing their own things. One of them, uh, is a psychic at, like, a fair or something. You see, uh, Barbara Crampton there from the... Uh, reanimator movies and a bunch of other full moon stuff. Uh, she would go on to be in them a lot later. Uh, but anyway, they all get to the hotel and they find that Gallagher has killed himself. This is one thing that I was a bit younger when I first saw this movie, and uh, you don't really get too many establishing scenes. You don't really get any where Gallagher's alive at this hotel, and you just showed another suicide. And I was like, why does he look younger? I thought this said skip to present day. And it confused me for a second when I was younger and I first watched this. Um, that they didn't have any scenes of Gallagher being alive and you have two suicides back to back. Uh, but anyway, eh, kid. But, so, they find that just like the old puppet master, Gallagher has also killed himself. And they don't know what's going on. Uh, because they've all been invited to this hotel apropos of nothing. And they find that Gallagher has married the uh, current owner of the hotel. Uh, she's a lot younger than him, a really a nice woman. And they're like, oh, you knew Gallagher as a nice person, too. That's, uh, that's not the Gallagher we know. So they all stay at this hotel. They try to use their, their powers to try to figure out what's going on, try to, to figure out why they called him. Why, why he called them there, 
and you know slowly why they're all by themselves uh, the puppets from earlier start to come out and unfortunately for these people the puppets are no longer super nice and throughout the movie and visions and uh, and other psychic means they start to kind of piece together what's going on um, but it is a bit of a mystery and it's kind of a weird thing with uh, mysteries that involve magic is you don't really know what the rules are for the magic so it's a little harder to solve uh, the mystery but it does build up when the puppets start to roam about and in the, the climax of the movie it really does build to something great and it's the common criticism with the movie is uh, the human parts people don't care as much about and it gets kind of slow there but the thing is this is a movie that's remembered and propelled by one very excellent element and that is of course the puppets the puppets in this are the best uh, they make the movie um, yeah primarily I think five puppets here uh, Blade is the main puppet uh, Blade he's got a black hat black coat and he's got like a skull face he's got a blade in one hand and a hook in the other he's the coolest one then you have um, Pinhead Pinhead a tiny little head but big giant arms they actually got a uh, a dwarf to uh, in some scenes where they needed the hands to move around more this is kind of a cool special effect back then and if you look at I think the bonus features have a shot of how they did that um, so you have the one with the big hands uh, Pinhead uh, Tumbler got like an army uniform and a big drill on his head. He'll charge at you with his drill head, <laughs> which is great. Uh, the leech woman, who is a, a lady in a dress, um, she opens up her mouth and can drop leeches on you, which is <laughs> is a kind of like nasty, a uh, nasty little power there. Um, especially because I guess she just makes the leeches inside of her. That's, I mean they don't show her finding the leeches and eating them so I guess she has the power to to create leeches which is crazy um, and then Chester who spins around his face and uh, he can change his expression he kinda serves as more the emotional core of the puppets as he'll look one way and something say bad will happen he'll spin around his face and he'll have a, a sad face on or something he's the the least violent of the group you do see a few more puppets in the opening scenes, but they don't really uh, come into play as much once they all get packed up. And, uh, of course, more sequels, more puppets. You get to see in the sequels a whole bunch of, of more puppets, and I'm super anxious to watch those. I mean, just looking at the covers for the other movies and going, Oh, man, what's that puppet do? Oh, man, what that puppet do? Um, I think it's like Puppet Master 3. You get Six Shooter, which is like, cowboy with six arms and, and each arm has a gun it, it's it's great um, the puppets make the movie even though the human parts can go kinda slow the puppets are amazing and that makes the whole thing uh, worth watching anyway fun movie I really enjoyed it uh, next time on the channel I'm gonna cover everything I saw in the month of August. So I'll see you guys next time. I only saw three movies this August, so uh, going to be kind of a shorter video. Have a good day.